Okay, so for our logo project, our introduction to Adobe Illustrator, we uploaded three things for PhotoBucket. We uploaded our sketch. We uploaded our offset logos, which meant that they're just black shapes, but they have something around them, either a white stroke, which here is a hard edge, almost like a sticker, and I added a drop shadow as well, or like a, a, a light glow on just black shape logos. And we want logo solutions that are clear, that are versatile, and that are engaging, right? And so you can see the difference between our sketch and our line drawings, and then our refined black shapes. Logos are definitely shape-based. That way they scale and work even when really small. The next thing we uploaded were the color variations. And this color was just created within Photoshop. Not just color, but also texture, gradations, you know, little variations. But the problem with doing it in, in Photoshop is it takes the entirety of the black shape and it just fills it as a layer style with color. Right. But with tinkering with that, you can customize it in, in interesting ways. So here I was able to make it look a little bit like the pitchfork was glowing. It looks a little more demonic. And I liked how this one worked. And here the texture is much more subtle. And I even have a little bit of noise built into the drop shadow. So it's a nice play of hard edge and soft edge. And you can control those colors. Now the beauty of Illustrator is just look how clean everything is. And that's what you want from, from graphic design. I also have a subtle emboss on the edge, which is something you can do in Photoshop, where you have a slight drop shadow right at the edge of the shape and a slight highlight, so it raises it up. Embossing is when you press into the paper and leave dents, or you press the back of the paper and it puffs out. So that gives you that illusion. So another way to add color is within Illustrator itself. And I'm not saying this is necessarily a better way. In some ways, it's just a different way. In some ways, it's, it gives you more options. In some ways, it's more limiting. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my Adobe Illustrator file. Or even better yet, maybe back to my individual EPS files, right? I can open those with Illustrator. Now, this is a particular one that makes sense because this isn't just one cut out shape. To color this in Illustrator, it's basically the same as coloring it in Photoshop. It's one, the bull's head with the fork as the cutout is, is one continuous shape. So it's one combined path in Illustrator, which basically means you can do the same things to it that you can in Photoshop. But I am curious about some of the other options. Let's see. So as Illustrator is opening, I'm going to remind you, if we go back to our course, and we go to the assignment sheets, Digital Art 1. And now that we're into vector programming, we have quite a few different things. And we go to the logo design and creation basics, right? Which introduce us to this stuff. It's good to review it. But we can go now to the finishing tips in Illustrator, not just using the pen tool, but things like this, the retro effect, There's, there's different things we can do to kind of cut out the scribble effect. These could be effects like the, the bevel and emboss and the texture in Photoshop that we can add in Illustrator. But most of all, the difference is, like this example, we can make different shapes, different local colors. And that's important. 
Oh no, I don't want Illustrator to quit unexpectedly. So we're gonna bring in just our black shaped uh, bull logo. And then we're gonna play with the different options you have for coloring and layering and gradations within Illustrator as soon as it opens. I'm just getting this ready. Come on, open up for me. So that's the charcoal artistic texture we might use later. I'll show that. All right. Let's see, why don't you have the one I want? Okay, so remember Illustrator just remembers each path you made and I only, I have them all combined on this one layer, right? But if I open up that layer, I can see each individual path. Now, if I'm being my, my usual super organized self as a designer with an illustrator, because it can get really frustrating when you make a, a change to something you didn't mean to, what I'll do is I'll select it all, I'll copy it, you know, Command C, I'll lock that layer, turn it off, make a new layer on top of it, and then edit, paste it in place. So now I have a new copy, and now this will be my color one. Now to do this, I wanna make sure that color is an option. And you see how when I drop down my path, it isn't. You know, I just have um, fill and none. And if I play with this, the color selector, I only will get options when I go to the foreground color and I can see this rainbow. So sometimes, and we're going to learn about live tracing in the next assignment. Sometimes Illustrator will limit your coloring options. And to do that, you need to open a new file, copy it into it, and make sure it's a print file. So what can I do? Well, I can take each of these individual paths and pick you know, a different color for them. And I can even mix them out of the ink CMYK because the default color arrangement within Illustrator is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now, once I've picked a color, so let's say this kind of mauve-ish color. This is kind of fun. All I need to do is select others and then use the, the eyedropper and click on the, the color I want to copy. So for instance, if I want that horn and this horn to match, I can click on it and then use the eyedropper to make it match. Or if I want this one to match this, I just use the eyedropper. So that way you can kind of establish your palette. So maybe I want that for the horns. Let's see, what do I want for the pitchfork? Well, maybe something less intense than that. I'll mix it over here. You can use color guides as well, you know, to get more typical colors. Ones that even fit within certain modes. I mean, there's just lots of ways you can go about choosing your colors, but we'll be kind of fast about it. I think I want something in the reds, though. Ooh, that's nice. Something maroon. Let's do that. All right. And then, how do I match it? 
I select something else, I use the eyedropper tool and I match it. Same thing, I can hold down command to get back to the select tool, use the eyedropper, command. Actually, maybe I'll keep the bottom black. I think I'll keep the hooves black. Now for the bull itself, let's see what colors. Maybe something on the cooler side. Maybe that with more black added. A little bit more magenta, a little bit more yellow. Yeah, that kind of works. All right, and then I can do, do that for the spine as well. Eyedropper. Let's see, where else do I want that? Maybe the arm. I'm trying to make this fairly colorful. Maybe the leg. Maybe this leg. Okay, so now I'm getting all these different colors in there. Black is is an option, so you don't need to do without it. And I kind of like black on the others. Okay, so now what other options do we have? Well, let me take that now. And this is what I do in Illustrator over and over again. Is Illustrator files, vectors don't take up a whole lot of memory. So I can select it all, copy it, lock it, turn it off, make a new layer, paste it all in place. And now I'm gonna add another property. Besides just a fill color, I'm gonna add a gradient. And I'm gonna add a gradient to everything. So you can go to Window, and you can go to Gradient, right? But I have it open here. And I wanna drop down the gradient and see what options there are. There aren't many. So it's gonna be a linear gradient. I can make it radial. But notice this is very different than doing it within Photoshop. In Photoshop, when you do a layer style with a gradient, it does it over the entire shape, right? In Illustrator, it does it within each individual path. So it's a very different look. And linear can be pretty interesting this way. You can also set the angle. And so it looks, you know, a little bit higher end. Now, if you combine that with transparency, right? I can add that gradient and make it, you know, 40% transparent, right? And that's kind of sophisticated and cool looking, but because it's transparent, not a gradient from gray to white, then I can add the color behind it and get gradient versions of my flat colors, right? So that's with flat color, that's with the gradient on top of it. And you can customize the gradient. So if I duplicate that gradient one more time, so copy it, you can also do color gradients. Edit, paste in place. So now the gradient's doubled up. Let me play with this gradient now. And see if I can force it. Ah. This is where it's limiting me because it should give me color options here. Let me see, I'll try radial. And what you can play with on the gradient mm -hmm. is the opacity. So I'm gonna play with the slider here and take the opacity of that black down to about 60%, maybe even less, maybe like 30%. So it's a really subtle highlight within each of these. And then I can set the angle and stretch it a little bit. You know, so they don't need to be uh, perfect circles. They can be slightly angular gradients, which might give a slightly different look. So it's highlights on them. And then I can select which ones I don't want, right? Like maybe I don't want that on everything equally, or maybe I do. I can try it without the, uh, without the linear gradient. Or I can take the linear gradient and play with its transparency. So it's a lot like layer styles, right? I have to select it all first. 